Max Hall and Melbourne Football Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. This is Nat Fife from the Fremantle Footy Club. Trent Cotchin from the Richmond Footy Club. Scott Benderbury from the Collingwood Football Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. Patrick Cooch from the Carlton Footy Club. It's Rory Sloan here from the Adelaide Crows. This is Tom Mitchell from the Hawthorne Footy Club, and you're listening to the Coaches Panel. Hey friends, MJ from the Coaches Panel. We are back for another daily episode as we count through who I think are the 50 most relevant players in Supercoach, AFL, Fantasy and Dream Team for the 2021 season. Are you agreeing or disagreeing with my list? Look, politely, don't really mind because it's all a subjective list and it's about starting a conversation. And that's what we love doing, not just amongst the members of the panel, but a bunch of bunch of great friends across the fantasy footy community he's already been on an episode a few days ago we loved him we thought we'd get him back yet again stevie fizz hello mate from the draft doctors how are you i'm very good mate good to be back talking some fantasy footy Talking fantasy footy, talking Jack Steele today at number 31. If you play draft, whether it be a single season, keeper league, AFL fantasy, ultimate footy, category leagues, keeper leagues. Look, if you play drafts, you need to be making sure you follow the guys at the Draft Doctors weekly podcast. Plenty of articles coming right now. They're ranking a bunch of different players across all the scoring lines. And in the next couple of weeks, two great resources for you to check out. The Draft Kit, it is a must purchase. Real cheap cheap too for the great quality of insight you get and the mock draft simulator meaning you can try every different strategy you like and look we're talking about it before we get to jack Steele, let's talk about the mock draft simulator it does give you that opportunity doesn't it where where sometimes your drafting position can change year in year out some let you choose some do it with like i think you guys choose the royal rumble um is how you choose to pick um like no matter where you land you can try do i draft heavy rocks mids there's so much strategy to trial on it isn't there yeah, absolutely. It's uh, I think it's a fascinating year with so many uh, big name forwards, especially at the top yeah. of the list. So I want to see if I don't go get a forward, what my team looks like. If I do get a forward, how does it look? Uh, it's just a, a lot of fun to play around with. And uh, you, you certainly coming into your draft very prepared, I would say. Yeah, no, it's fair enough too. What'll be interesting to see is where Jack Steele goes in drafts. We'll get your thoughts a little bit later on in the episode about where we should consider drafting him. But just at 25 years old, this midfielder had a career season across all formats of the game. His highest score last year was a 111 against the Gold Coast Suns. That's not an adjusted score. You want to play that adjusted averages? Fine. Um, that We can do that for you a little bit later. But his best ever super coach score did happen last year, though. That was against the Brisbane Lions. It was a monster, a 167. If you want to know his career non-adjusted AFL fantasy score, that is a 145. He did that just a couple of years ago against North Melbourne. His average last year of AFL fantasy and dream team was a 90.9. You want to know what that is adjusted, which is multiplying it by 1.25. It's not bad. It's a 113.6. Not a bad season from old Jackie Steele. While in Supercoach, huge average for us last year is a 122. He's priced just over 650K in Supercoach, just under 850,000 in Dream Team and 867,000 in AFL Fantasy. And Steve, there was plenty of talk throughout the preseason last year about Jack Steele that He's going to be freed from the tag. We saw Brett Ratton do that towards the back end of 2019. We want to see what you're like hunting the ball. And there was some concern amongst the fantasy community that that might see a, a scoring dip, but we saw anything but that in 2020. Oh, he was a machine. Machine, absolutely amazing value for anyone who picked him. Uh, I didn't. I was terrified of what was going to happen at St Kilda. Had really no read on the situation, but uh, Jack Steele just blew it out of the water. He was just incredible. And there were moments where if you were playing in the salary cap formats the game, you saw him maybe start the, the season well. And you're like, okay, that's cool. He, he That's all right. Yeah, that's he's just having a hot run. He's done that before in 2019. He's done that before in 2018. But as the year kept going on, he just found a way to keep getting better. Like there were some early tons in super coach and dream team or adjusted tons in AFL fantasy. You're like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. I can, I can go against him. I can go against him. And yeah, by that last six, seven, eight weeks, he was unstoppable. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he was amazing. That's, that's what can you say? That's, that's sort of where it is. And he sort of fits that mold of that uh, Taylor Adams type who, you know, lays a lot of the tackles, gets a lot of contested ball and seemingly, and, and he's the tagger really more than so he, he's going to get tagged. 
Yeah, look, he ranked last year um, fourth in the AFL for tackles, six for contested possessions, six for stoppage clearances, eighth for total clearances, 14th for effective disposals, and 18th for goal assists. So it's, again, not this one-dimensional player here. He's getting the ball. He's winning the ball at clearance, both in the ground, in the centre and around the ground. He's using it well. He's making sure he's impacting and setting up goals. And then when he doesn't have the ball, he's making sure he creates a contest and slowing it down. So he's ticking all those bonces, those boxes we want as fantasy coaches. If you want to break down his year, it's five dream team and AFL fantasy tons, an additional six 90 plus scores. And just really the one stinky game from him, just the one sub 70 all year. He ended up ranking last year in dream team and fantasy fifth overall for total points and 10th by averages while in super coach 13 tons, 10 of them were over 120. Six of them were 136 or higher had four scores all year under a hundred. And just once dipped under 86 was third for averages. Um, only Neil and Gorn were higher in super coach based on the average and ranked second for total points in super coach. Like, is there actually any more growth out of this guy? It feels like he he hit his peak. He's only 24, 25, but is there more that he can grow, Steve? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I'm um look, look, he's really good, and I think he'll be fine again. Like we see tackles are very sticky stat. Yeah. Um, but if you're gonna go like he's such a contested beast, he does so much in that area. Where does he grow? It's, it's going to be uncontested ball. And I don't yeah. think that's him. No. And especially when you then bring in um, a guy like Brad Crouch, who just two years ago, when he got his last run of a full AFL season was ranked inside the top 10 for total disposals. And so while Brad's a bit more of an in and outside a player, he's not just a pure outside seagull. He does have an inside dimension to him. He's coming straight into that midfield. I know they'll have to readjust that. Maybe some Gresham timeout. Maybe Zach Jones a bit more outside. Seb Ross wasn't even there um, to, to lose any midfield time to begin with. But that's where it does start to become a little challenging of if he does drop back a little bit, let alone maintain, how far back does he fall away for us in 2021, if at all? Yeah, and- it's a good point. And for me, he's actually a total fade. Like I'm just not going to have any, any piece of him. And a lot of that is, I think he'll come back with the internal competition, like your Brad Crouch, like you mentioned, he'll come straight in. I'm sure he'll have a bigger impact than a Jade Gresham did mm. or a Zach Jones. You've also got uh, Hunter Clark in that yeah. team. You potentially got a fit Hanbury for some time. Um, so there's certainly, I think there's internal competition that's going to make it harder. And you've also got guys behind him like uh, Tom Mitchell, Josh Kelly. These guys are cheaper. They're coming in yeah. with a lower average. And I, I actually I have these guys just leaping him. It's not yeah. like he could be a better player, but be worse for fantasy. Yeah, it's tough too. And, and we talked a bit about it with Luke Ryan's episode, which we had you on a, a couple of days ago. Was it just a perfect storm too? Like Jack Steele's never been a a crazy high time on ground sort of player, like sort of, you know, averaging in around the mid eighties. So, which is fair enough too, but was it just also a shortened quartered season helped him stay out there or was, or is that causation or correlation not really there? Yeah, it's a good question. I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that sort of thing. I'm, I, I don't know because you sort of look at, there wasn't an overall trend of, you know, all the contested players got a bump. Like I know Clayton Oliver was good in that, but like Lucky Hunter had his best season ever. Yeah. And Andrew Gaff was still at the top. So the mix was pretty, pretty good. So I don't think we can draw hard and fast conclusions from that. Uh, but he, he was amazing. And, I, you know, Seb Ross has been a mainstay in that midfield. He's, he got taken out. Yeah. Jack Steele got freed up. There's just, there's a few things going on at St Kilda. And I think it's really hard to just go, yes, this is how it is. Yeah, it is. And you're right. You look at that value that you don't have to drop drastically too far down. Just even you drop yourself 20, 30, 50 K in, in, or a hundred K in the salary cap formats of the game. And you go, well, I think I'll take the value of Patrick Cripps or Tom Mitchell or Josh Kelly or Tim Taranto or, or even Matt Crouch who had a great flying end of the year and, and isn't priced as high as him in some of the formats. It's like, I feel like I'm going to get a better, more immediate return at a smaller cost point. And if he does come out and smash 2021, it's fine. I'll just grab him a couple of weeks later in the non-draft versions of the game. Yeah. And that's probably where we're at. Like I'll have 
like I said, I'll have Josh Kelly, Tom Mitchell, Matt Crouch. I love this year, especially yeah. in AFL fantasy. So I'm all about these guys. And maybe, look, maybe I'm just completely wrong. Maybe it's a total air pick and, and Steele's awesome. But I would imagine, especially in Supercoach, I'd imagine he'd get drafted in front of a lot of those guys. So should provide us with um, a bit of value if you're not a big believer in him repeating the 120 or whatever. It was just 122 amazing. in Supercoach. Like, you know, yeah. Again, Neil and Gorn, they're about they're like a, yeah. a, a stratosphere ahead of everyone else, and then he leads this pack uh, of midfielders in the one twenty brigade. Look, is from a buy perspective again not hugely relevant for those that play drafts, but the Crows, Sydney, Fremantle, Melbourne, and Collingwood. So there are some midfielders there that again, if you're kind of going okay, where do and if I choose to have him. Well, you got the likes, like you said, of a Matt Crouch, who you're quite hot on, a Clayton Oliver, who's rolling through there. Maybe in, in the super coach formats, you're quite confident that Nat Fife's going to be able to get somewhere close to a high teens level of season about him. And he's going to, if he stays on the park, we know in that format of the game, he's just up in that top tier of great scoring guys. And then Collingwood, Taylor Adams, another player alluded to. So that's when it starts to get challenging for coaches of going, maybe I'm just going to have to wait and then hope. I can pick him up at that nice right price at the back end of the year. I don't know. I'm with you. I think if someone said, what do you need to see in the preseason to be able to start Jack Steele? Like as, as horrible as it sounds, I probably need an injury or two to some of that inside brigade at St. Kilda. Like I probably need to see Brad Crouch, you know, miss some time. I, I, I don't, you never want to see injuries to someone, but that's the only thing that for me would feel like I'd go, yeah, he's going to do this again. Yeah, oh, look, if if Jack's, I don't think he, I don't think he'll do it again. But if he falls to me in the right spot, I'll I'll happily take him. One thing he has been, as opposed to some of these other guys, durable man. He's yeah. he's missed three games in three years, so and he's got he the right miss. role. So that's that's doesn't good. miss. Got a good role, nice scoring floor, got a nice ceiling about him. You know, getting involved in the scoring components of the game, not just in terms of the ball winning components of it. And gosh, where he goes on draft day. I'm really keen on your thoughts because he should be an M1 for people based on what he delivered for us last year. But it seems like people are really quite hot on, I've got to get one of those rucks or top end backs or forwards early in the first round. Are we going to see the least amount of midfielders taken in the first round ever before in most drafts? Yeah, I would expect that actually. And I think there's so much value like like you mentioned with guys like Tim Tirano, etc., coming in down the line, I think you'll you'll certainly see the the mids drop. Uh, Steel, where does he go in drafts? The funny thing is, he's probably not a he's not a probably a big name. Like it's yeah. not a sexy name. Like he's a good player and all that, but it's, how much do people in, invest in him? I'd say in Dream Team, he's probably going middle back of the second. Uh, yeah. At yeah, it's probably going to be where you have to pay. Supercoach, I could see him going anywhere from. Oh, six to 16. It's just going to yeah. be dependent on the draft, but he'll certainly be gone before the end of the second round. Yeah. I, I, if he's sitting there and you've got an early third round pick, like it feels wrong to say you've won the draft at the third round, but if he's the guy you're picking in the third round, you certainly feel like you're hedging your bets, but it, it is that name acquisition, isn't it? Sometimes in drafts, it just gives that extra security for us where you go, look, he might not score as much as a Josh Kelly. Yeah but I feel like I'll pick Josh because he's a bit more of a name thing that it does matter to some coaches, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, maybe you're a saints fan and you go, how can you say that? that you, and that's fine. That's you, <laughs> yeah. you want to root for your guy. That's I understand that. So I don't, it's, it's all it takes is one person you draft MJ. That's one very, person. very true. It's very, very true. Look, he, he's a fascinating player. I think he's going to be right up towards the top of the tree of our scoring midfielders. Again, is he going to be in the top five? I've got my doubts, but can he stay around that top 10 scoring midfielder for us in 2021? He's going to have some competition this year if some of those big names can stay fit and firing on the park. But that's the thing he's had going over hit for him over some of those other guys in the past couple of years is he's been fit and he's been firing. Stevie Fizz of the Draft Doctors, thanks so much, mate, for stepping on by through this episode. No, thanks for having me, mate. Hope all your uh, listeners are enjoying your content. I certainly enjoy it. So, yeah, let's have a good preseason. Thank you, mate. I've been uh, I've been going through the weights room at the moment. Can't you tell? Uh, he's at number <laughs> thirty. <laughs>
<laughs> one Jack Steele. <laughs> if you want to read the article, it's online now at coachespanel.tv. No, true story. Stevie Fizz can see me right now. There is no weights being put on this body for a long, <laughs> long time, um, except carrying the burden of supporting Adelaide. That is the only thing I'm carrying in life these days. Uh, if you want to check out the article, it is at coachespanel.tv. All the other player articles are revealed as we go every single day. And this podcast episode, amongst all the others, you can get it through the way you're getting this episode. So Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple iTunes, on our website, wherever you want to find it, it is there. Number 30 in the 50 most relevant. Gosh, almost at the halfway mark. Who is he? I'll tell you about him tomorrow. Yeah,